Yo, what is up guys, it's Pedro here and in today's video I'll be talking about a hidden gem that the Washington Commanders found this offseason in undrafted free agent Tyler Owens who has been absolutely balling out during training camp but also these last couple preseason games. So I'm going to be going over some film with you guys, some clips so you guys can see for yourselves what he's doing, all 22 stuff, where he's lining up, and it's absolutely everywhere. It's not just at safety and why I think he will make this team and might be able to be a contributor in his rookie year as an undrafted free agent. If you guys are new, subscribe, hit that like button, that notification bell as well, and comment down below. Honestly, anything, but what undrafted free agent you're most excited about all those things help out a ton and it takes a few seconds it just boosts the algorithm a little bit and subscribe is free yeah but let's let's get right into it i made a video about tyler owens a couple weeks ago and this was before his first preseason game and now his second where he played pretty well in both of the preseason games in the first preseason game he forced a fumble and also had a really really good special teams tackle where he you know, he was a gunner, I believe. I, I think he was a gunner on that play, and he was able to tackle the punt returner for a gain of nothing on the play. And sometimes that's going to force a fumble. You know, you do that three, four times, probably one out of those four is going to be a forced fumble, and that is a huge, huge play in a game, especially if it's a close game. That changes the game. Absolutely changes the game. Not only do you get, you know, a possession of the football, you know, you take possession away from them, but you also take away momentum and you give yourself momentum. So that is huge. And, you know, they have some good special teams players and safeties, but Tyler Owens might be at the top of that list. And if you guys didn't know, this guy's an athletic freak. And that was the title of the last video about Tyler Owens. But you look at his, you know, numbers, he is six foot a little over six foot two 216 pounds which is good for a safety vertical leaps 41 inches which is insane broad jump i believe he was very close to a record let's see i know it says it somewhere here like an inch away from a record and this uh, 100 meter is a 10.29 which is very fast he didn't run the 40 but the you know projections are right there he said he would have been 40 yard king would have been faster than Xavier Worthy. I don't know about that. That is a 4-2, or I guess he would have been a 4-2. That's that's crazy. But hey, maybe he would have. We don't know, but we do know he's he's very quick. We saw that in the game, and I'll show you guys the clip of him chasing down the Dolphins ball carrier and saving a touchdown. But that wasn't the only play he made. He made some other plays as well. You look at the stats in the game, uh, you go to Tyler Owens, he had three tackles, three solos, and a tackle for a loss. You look at where he played, uh, three were at the line of scrimmage, 11 you know, in the box, two in the slot, one on the outside, 19 as, at free safety. This is courtesy of Mason and PFF, I guess he put it out, uh, but he got the information from PFF. Shout out to Mason though, because he put this tweet out. And then also uh, did a cut up of all the clips from Tyler Owens against the Miami Dolphins. So if you want to watch the whole thing, it's about six minutes because he did play a lot of snaps. Uh, you know, I'm not going to do the math here, but what? I mean, I guess I'll do the math. 36 snaps. Uh, so he played a decent amount of snaps against the Miami Dolphins. And I'm assuming he's going to play a little bit more against the Patriots. And maybe even will start. If the starters don't play, he might be uh, one of the guys getting a lot of PT. And I think at this point, he is going to make the roster. It's going to be very hard to not have him on the you know 53-man roster. And there's ways they can you know maneuver things where Dom Hampton, the fifth-round pick, and, and that's one thing. Like Tyler Owens has been as absolutely out outperformed Dom Hampton. That's not to say that Dom Hampton's not going to get better. And that's not to say Dom Hampton has been bad. But Tyler Owens has been that good that he's outperforming a fifth round pick. And they're, they played Dom Hampton at linebacker a little bit last game. So that actually helps out Tyler Owens a little bit because that kind of takes one safety out of the safety room. That's still going to make the roster. He's going to make, Dom Hampton's going to make the roster. But you have him there at linebacker and then you're able to keep Tyler Owens on the roster because you know Jeremy Chin and Quan Martin, they're making it. Those guys are locks. And then after that, it's Jeremy Reeves. You're 
it just it's tough to cut him. He's a locker room guy, fan favorite. He's a good special teams player, and he's on a two year deal. Uh, so you got him probably making it. And then the next guys, Derek Forrest, Percy Butler, and uh, you know Tyler Owens. Like that's really the list there. And maybe they move on from Percy Butler and keep Tyler Owens. I personally like Derek Forrest more than Percy Butler. He's been here for a little bit longer. And, you know, he has played well before. He's a good tackler for the most part. I do really like him. So I personally would keep uh, Forrest over Butler. Uh, real quick, I'll show you guys some clips from the game. And just, you know, you can see, I'm not going to show the whole thing, but he's lining up all over the place. You can see on this play where he's lining up. There's some uh, plays like Mason had. He's lining up at the line of scrimmage. You see right here where he's lining up. I'm just going through. I'm going to, uh, here he's, you know, at free safety. Um, look where he's starting. And yeah, this just shows the versatility that he has in here. Let's see. This, was this the play? Uh, we'll, we'll start here. We'll start here. So show you guys this, and then we'll go to the next play. So this is the one where the runner, uh, you know, he's going to the left, and then he, you know, cuts back, you know, breaks it back to the other side and Tyler Owens is able to, he reads it and he's able to, you know, go through this guy right here and kind of break up the runner, like trip him up a little bit and is, you know, allows the other guys to tackle him. So I'm sure he doesn't get credit for that tackle, but that was a solid play. Being able to read that, slow him down a little bit and make sure your other guys can get him down again. He's not the one who officially makes the tackle, but he definitely contributed there. Uh, helps out because if he doesn't do that, then maybe it's a maybe this guy right here isn't able to help with the tackle and it's just him and it's a 1v1 and maybe he's not able to make the tackle. I don't know. Still a solid play and here. I guess there's one more play before the next play. Uh, here doesn't do a lot, nothing much, just a normal run play. Uh, 57 making a big play. So here is the play where he saves a tackle and honestly, you watch it at first and he kind of is part of the reason that the runner gets a bunch of yards like he gets blocked up and isn't able to uh, help tackle the runner because like right here there's a big hole that the runner's able to uh, get through and Tyler Owens is one of the guys that maybe you know should be able to get this tackle right here but you know what he doesn't this guy I can't see the number on him but he did worse than Tyler Owens on that play. Absolutely whiffs on a tackle. But then you see Tyler Owens here. I mean, I want to, let's go back a little bit and see like right here, see where he is. He's right here. He's at the 35 yard line and he's, he's, you know, four yards behind the runner, maybe three and a half yards behind him right now. Yeah. Like four yards and he's a little further away. So he's got to, he's got to make up some ground and he's able to do that and saves a touchdown because I don't know if these guys right here are getting him. Definitely saves some yards and another kind of a shoestring tackle trips him up and that helps out the commanders for sure. And then like a couple plays later, I believe he makes a nice tackle for loss. I think it's this play right here. He reads it pretty well. No, sorry. It's not, wait, is it this one? No, you think he helps on that one, but there is one play where he completely you know, makes a tackle for loss. I'm not sure which one it is. It's it's pretty soon, but you know, overall, this was probably one of his better drives. Um, he's solid in coverage, and he got he's got those. You know, I think at times he doesn't have the best instincts, but his speed and his athleticism help make up for it. Like sometimes you see he's a little bit late to react to certain things, but he ends up getting there because of it because of his athleticism. So once he gets more exposed to stuff he's going to you know be able to uh make a lot more plays because again his speed's already there and now you you add that instinct and it helps a ton it helps a ton and uh just showing you guys some plays here uh you know he he's uh he made some plays he made some plays i i'm not sure why i can't find the the tackle for loss he had Maybe that was it before, but I'm pretty sure he had another one. But yeah, he had a good game overall, and he's been making plays in training camp, in uh, you know making multiple interceptions in training camp. Like he's the name I've probably heard the most on defense, along with maybe 
Frankie Louvu, and then I'll throw in like Jamin Davis just because of the edge rusher stuff. Like Jamin Davis is getting run at edge rusher, and that's a new position. So we're hearing a lot about that. But after that, it's really like Tyler Owens and you know maybe a couple other guys. So he, he's done well. I really think at this point it's a lock for him to make the roster because he makes special teams play like plays. Even in the game against the Dolphins, he uh you know just knocked down the Dolphins guy and is able to help with the special teams tackles. So like he just makes plays every time and he's young, super athletic, and he's only gonna get better. He's a UDFA, it seems like a good find. Anytime you can have an undrafted free agent make your 53-man roster, it's a good thing. And if he's active, he might be active on Sundays. And that's a really good thing. And it's it's not only like he's a good player and now, he has potential. The, the, the traits are there. Now it's just about coaching him up and getting those instincts and that processing quicker, which it's not, it's usually, it's not very quick when you're a rookie. So it's understandable it's not there. And he's got the athleticism that once he does put that together, it could be scary. I'm not saying he's going to be a stud, but he could be a very solid player for, for them. And when you find a player like that as an undrafted free agent, that's a very, very good pickup. And it's a good ad by Adam Peters and company. I don't know who's responsible for scouting him, but whoever is, good job there. And I, I think if you release him, someone's going to pick him up. So I would personally keep him and see what you can do with him. If you guys did stay till the end, go ahead... I'm trying to think of a player that we can do. I was thinking about the punter. I forgot his name. The Australian guy, Roka, or whatever his name is. But I'm not going to do him. We'll go go a little bit of a OG player. We'll go Doug Williams, Super Bowl winner for us. And, uh, yeah, Super Bowl MVP. But, yeah, that's it for today's video. Hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, do all that good stuff. And comment down below Doug Williams, who Jaden Daniels was repping in his first preseason game. Peace.